Hello everybody, my name is Pantsface and welcome to my multi-dotting Mimiron guide. Today I'm going to walk you through my best parts on Mimiron and talk about the fight along the way. I've slowed the video down so it'll be easier to show what I'm doing because Mimiron can be a hectic fight, especially on hard mode. I'm going to skip phases 1 and 2 because those are just single target. Really just dodge the fire, dodge the bombs, dodge the rockets, dodge spinning up, and just DPS the boss and you'll be fine. Let's hop into phase 3. When phase 3 starts, only the head will be active for the first few seconds. So give your range tank a second before you do your full DPS rotation, just so you don't pull aggro. After a few seconds, you'll have the first add spawn. These are the emergency fire bots. You can toss a dot or two on these, but you don't want to kill them because they douse the fire throughout this phase and that's extremely valuable. You don't want to get too close to them though, because they silence anyone within 15 yards. And they have an AoE frontal ability. This will deal a lot of damage and knock you around, so make sure to stay away from them, but you can toss up a dot or two if you happen to run by them. The assault bot and the junk bots are the other adds that we want to have dots rolling on at all times. The assault bots need to die, and the junk bots are just kind of annoying and don't do a whole hell of a lot. Try not to pull aggro on them, but even if you have one or two junk bots attacking you, they don't hurt that bad and you can easily be healed through it. So keep your dots rolling on the assault bots, keep your dots rolling on the junk bots, and then focus your single target into the aerial command unit. Also try to keep a shadow word pain on the emergency fire bots if they come within range. So the one ad we're ignoring here is the bomb bots. Some raids may kill them, but mine does not. We let a tank taunt it so that the bomba runs at the tank and explodes. It doesn't kill the tank and it saves us from wasting time DPSing it down. So I'm not going to be attacking it in this video. So if your guild does this differently, then make sure you toss some dots on it. But I would highly recommend the tank strategy. I think it's safer and it will allow you to get out of the phase faster if you don't have to spend time DPSing them. When the assault bots die, they'll drop a core, and a melee DPS will use this core underneath the head to pull it down. It will start spinning and take 50% increased damage. When this happens, you want to DPS this as hard as you can. If you already have dots on it before it gets pulled down, they will start dealing increased damage automatically. There's no need to recast them unless they're falling off. If you want to learn more about dots and snapshotting, then be sure to check out my video on it. This phase can be extremely hectic, and if you find yourself running from fires, try to use that time to shadow word pain anything that's near you that doesn't have it already. I actually don't do the best job of that in this fight, so it's nice to know that I can increase my DPS by a few hundred if I just focus on my dots a little bit more. So in a nutshell for phase 3, you want to make sure you have dots rolling on pretty much everything at all times, and that you focus the head when it comes down. If you look to the areas where you're going to be running next, try to pre-plan your movement and know where the fire is. Now the fire in this phase is dependent upon your raid. How spread out are they from you? Are they near you? Are you near them? The farther people are from you, the more that fire can be spread out and potentially get in your way as you're running around the room. So maintaining a good raid stack is crucial here to maximizing your uptime on the fight because it'll minimize the amount of space that the fire is taking up. And that's it for phase three. Let's hop into phase four. Now phase four is a lot of fun, but also incredibly hectic. All three pieces come together and now we're dealing with everything that happened in the previous three phases. So we have to dodge fire, we have to dodge frost bombs, we have to dodge rockets, we have to dodge spinning up, we have to dodge hand pulse, we have to dodge mines. There's a lot of stuff to dodge. And while doing that, we wanna make sure we're multi-dotting all three sections. Not only are we multi-dotting though, we want to make sure we're AoEing. As a Shadow Priest, you can use Mind Seer on the middle section to hit the bottom and the top at the same time. Remember that Mind Seer is stronger than Mind Flay when it hits at least two targets, which means you need three targets stacked together, and that's exactly what we have here. It's actually the same on Kolagarn too, so if you Mind Seer the center, you can hit the two arms. So here you want to keep your dots rolling on all three sections and then Mind Seer the center. If you're a warlock, keep your dots rolling on all three sections and seed the center. Don't forget that seed will overwrite corruption on the target you cast it on, so don't cast corruption on the center target. Fire Mage is just living bomb everything. There's a ton of potential for AoE damage here. All three sections don't have the same amount of health though. So if everybody is AoEing and all three sections are dying at the same pace, you could get into a spot where one of your sections has a lot less health than the others. So you might need to single target into the other pieces so that their health catches up. 
So trying to find an open space is crucial here because that will allow you to DPS for longer. The perfect spot is somewhere where you're not close enough to the boss that mines will hit you or that you're going to need to run out because of shockwave. You know, frost bomb is random, but it targets fire. So if you're surrounded by fire, it's more likely the bomb will be near you. So trying to find an open patch that's pretty much away from everything, um, but still in range of DPSing the boss is what your goal is in phase four. Now, I get lucky in this phase because I rarely have to move. Even the spinning up gets pointed just ahead of me, so I don't even need to worry about that. But when you need to move, you want to make sure you're using every GCD to its fullest extent. This means as soon as you start moving, if you need to reapply Shadow Word Pain to any of the pieces, you're doing that. And if they all have Shadow Word Pain and it's not going to fall off, then use Shadow Word Death followed by spamming Devouring Plague. Maximizing your damage while moving is crucial to improving your parse on this fight. As a Shadow Priest, you can also use Dispersion to strategically position yourself. If you pop Dispersion, you can safely run through fires, hit mines, run through spinning up. The only thing you can't do is get hit by one of the rockets that has the red circle on the ground. These rockets deal 4.5 million damage, so even taking 10% of that is going to kill you. But if you have Dispersion and you have Rocket Boots, you can pretty much zoom through the entire arena without worrying about dying. And you can use this to your advantage like I do in this kill. I find an open spot so that I can dot up the boss and then I do my single target rotation because we're reaching the point where the middle and bottom have way more HP than the head does and I want to start focusing the other parts down. This is what I was talking about before. If everybody's AoEing and all three pieces are dying at the same rate, then the head would technically die first since it has the lowest HP. Once you have a piece reach 500k HP, you should single target the other pieces so that you can line up their HP. Now, had I not used Dispersion earlier to position myself, I would have been able to run to the other side of the boss where everybody else is. There was no fire there and it would have led me into that area. But there's more likely to be other mechanics to dodge since everybody's grouped up there. So really, the more open space you can find alone, the safer you're going to be in Phase 4. In Phase 3, obviously you want to stay grouped up, but positioning is the key to this entire fight. If you're away from mechanics, which is obviously easier said than done, then you'll be able to position yourself to constantly deal damage and to maximize your parse. Remember to use your defensive abilities for riskier movements if it allows you to position yourself into a great spot. And that's all for this guide. Mimiron really is a test of your ability to position yourself well and to DPS on the move. It is a great fight for learning how to play a dot class better, although it can be stressful as you're figuring it out. I hope this guide helps you secure a kill or at the very least improve your parse. My name's Pantsface and I'll see you in the next one.